friends Harsha Vasti and this is Notable Talks by APT anytechtrial.com which is the world's largest marketplace for softwares to try compare and there are lots and lots many of them for your personal and business use and right now we have Mark with us uh, from Kaspersky he is actually managing media and communication across asia pacific middle east and africa and i think that's a lot of ground to cover so welcome mark how are you feeling today hello harsha i'm doing great how are you i'm good too thank you so much <laughs> okay so first question i want to ask that since 2005 you have been uh, you know at front lines of rapidly evolving technology space with uh, so many first hand experiences across different aspects of a brand communications so we would like to know that according to you uh, which are the most promising marketing channels and automations one should focus uh, in 2022 this year one of the things i like about my job is the fact that the industry is always evolving uh, no two days are the same the media and communications landscape is very dynamic and it always changes year after year So I think to answer your question there are three things that marketers need to look out for in 2022 specifically in the area of marketing channels. Yeah. Number 1 is to prepare for the cookie less future of marketing. Now this has been an ongoing debate for marketers for the past uh 2 to 3 years since uh Google actually said that they will remove third party cookies from Chrome by 2022. Although this move has been postponed from January 2022 which is this month to late 2023 it remains to be an inevitable scenario so given this marketers need to can use this as a time for them to prepare in moving away from channels that are heavy on third party cookies into channels that are less or not depending on third party cookies to reach their consumers a few examples that they can consider are channels such as connected tv channels such as digital out of home uh, ott mm. even the likes of programmatic audio and mobile in app advertising so mm. another means to consider uh is for example building and honing their first party data okay. shifting into interest or behavioral targeting into contextual targeting creating a well uh curated private marketplace deals or leveraging on Google's privacy sandbox uh by a federated learning of cohorts for prospecting campaigns and turtle dove for the marketing campaigns. Mm-hmm. The second uh thing that they should focus on mm-hmm. uh based on my recommendation is the rise of sustainable media and advertising. So yeah. in a recent study, in a recent global study done by Microsoft and uh Dentsu, consumers are getting more and more involved or conscious in the way they consume their products or services and mm-hmm. one of the key considerations that they're looking for is whether these products or services are safe or are sustainable and are friendly to the environment out of that 70% 84% of those respondents say that they would also likely to buy from a company that practices sustainable media and marketing or advertising So right now it's a challenge to uh, clearly define the parameters of what uh, sustainable media and advertising is but some examples that I can pick off could mean yeah. talking about uh, sustainability uh, in your social media content mm-hmm. uh, putting some or promoting the green credentials in your website or your on-site mm-hmm. uh, assets or your own assets third would be uh using recycled paper on your on your traditional uh, billboards uh, uh using sustainable material for your wall murals and even yeah. using immersive technologies such as ai ar or vr to explain about the environmental impact and sustainability issues relating to your product or service yeah last but not the least is to focus on creating content that really matters. Now this yeah. aspect or this focus is related to B2B marketers who are always churning out uh B2B content to reach their prospect buyers. Um 
for example, in a study by Computer uh, Weekly and Tech Target, B2B purchase cycle has greatly shifted from physical meeting or physical uh, interaction into more virtual interaction. As a consequence, uh, a lot of B2B marketers or decision makers are bombarded with so many messages online. They're yeah. on, you know, so through social media, through uh, through uh, display banners or showing content in certain websites. So the fact that it is they're currently experiencing a lot of clutter in the online world, uh, it is important for marketers to create content that really matters to them. So topics such as how can uh, how can we help these uh, yeah. B2B decision makers to justify the purchase of the product that we're selling? Right. Or, uh, harness, or, for example, uh, uh, identifying the impact of the product on IT staffing mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. how the IT solution can address uh, hybrid or flexible working environments. So mm -hmm. those are the three, I think, the main considerations or focus that marketers should uh, should do or should prepare in 2022 so that they will be well equipped to face the challenge of this year. What tips would you like to give to a growth-faced startup uh, to set the right track for their media planning and marketing communication strategies, uh, which you know can support them to scale, to grow better? I think for growth startup uh, marketers or company owners per se, it is important, or I should say very crucial, to clearly identify the core objectives as a company as well as the gaps that needs to be addressed in a quantifiable manner or the most quantifiable way possible. At the end of the day, media, marketing, communications, advertising, these, in general, these things will only work if we are addressing a real or a specific uh, business issue. So I know for a fact that sometimes marketers or startup uh, companies uh, work in a very fast-paced environment where they learn fast, fail fast kind of a, kind of a scenario or environment. But uh, we know that st for startups, uh, they are stretched with financial resources. That means every dollar uh, counts. So advertising can actually be a huge expense for them if they don't know how to use it uh, properly. So the monies will just go into waste. So once you have identified that important aspect, your objectives, the gaps needed to be addressed in a quantifiable manner, uh, you can then clearly identify, consequently, what the role of marketing communication should be in addressing those business issues or addressing those gaps. So uh, you can, after you've done that exercise, it's it, it's difficult, but it has to be done. Uh, that's when you can think about the tactical aspects of your media planning, uh, media planning campaigns. For example, identifying or sizing your audiences, identifying the most efficient media to reach those audiences, and uh, the balancing act, which is also another heated debate in in marketing, the balancing act between brand marketing and performance marketing. So, does brand marketing work, or does a short term performance marketing work. So it's a balance between gaining enough or sufficient awareness for your product or for your company or for your service versus short-term sales goals. So I believe that one cannot be sacrificed or compromised, especially if you're new in the market, you want to promote yourself or you're not known in, 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 in the market, uh, the consumers don't know you. It is important that you strike a balance between uh, awareness building or brand building campaigns as opposed to conversion or a performance uh, marketing um, campaigns. So I think uh, for growth startups, this is something that I would recommend uh, so that they're making the right decisions or calculated risks for that matter. So my next question for you is, what are your thoughts about us? Any tech trial? What are your thoughts? To be to be honest, it's the first time I have I have uh, I have uh, seen or I've been aware of any tech trial. So when Abhishek uh, messaged me on LinkedIn, uh, I that's where I just explored or learned more about tech trial, uh, any tech trial, uh, dot com. And when I and when I went to the website, the solution or what your what your website is uh, promoting 
is very timely is very uh is very uh, relevant for consumers like me ordinary consumers who may not be uh, aware of the best products in the market that they should invest on so i know for a fact that you let consumers try different uh software different uh different tools or different solutions and that will enable us to have informed decisions on what's the best software for me not just are relying too much on advertising and not too much relying on uh doing your own desktop research or or even like a list of reading through uh tech reviews so of course the best judge or the best uh the best way for you to decide on what product or what tools or what software to purchase is you initially experience it uh yourself and i believe tech trial has that uh, i would say uh, a very good competitive advantage in terms of um get driving traffic uh to your to your website um i would say of course there are all, there are always room for improvement i think that uh there's a I would say there's a further way to optimize the the website uh, experience or the online experience by probably making some improvements on uh, the the navigation or the the way consumers are able to access the different tools, the different solutions, or the different options that they have uh, that are hosted within your within your website. So I think it's a matter of improvements on the on the. I would say on the UX uh, side of it, to ensure that uh, it's easy to navigate and it's easy to compare uh, different solutions or different tools. But nonetheless, I think those are um, technical aspects of the of of the of the of the website, and I believe you can you can always address those things. But I think the the the, pers- the proposition or the content that you have in your website is really uh, helpful and relevant for. ordinary consumers like like myself. Okay, Mark, now it is the rapid fire time. So, I have few questions uh for which you just have to answer in one word. So, I will just say something, my question is also one word. So, just whatever comes to your mind, you just have to tell us, but it has to be rapid. And after that, I have few questions which can be more than one word, but again, you have to be rapid about it. So, shall we start? Okay. I'm on. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Okay, one word that comes to your mind when I say holidays. M- miss, I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, people. Good. Super. Cybersecurity. Complex. Hmm. Automation. Needed. India. Culture. You, amazing. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> no, you are. Okay. Next one is uh, your most preferred collaboration tool. My most preferred collaboration tool is uh, Zoom. Okay. And your favorite OTT platform. My favorite OTT. I I don't have OTT. Your priorities for a working day. Getting things that are fastest to accomplish. before heading to the more difficult task. I think other people uh would say that we start with the most difficult task and then deprioritize the easy task. Yeah. For me, I value on the contrary, I value efficacy that I value efficacy. So that means I accomplish the task that is easier or faster for me to accomplish before I go to the heavy thinking or the heavy work that goes with the bigger tasks. Okay, makes sense. So moving on, uh what do you love doing most in your me time? I love exploring nature. I love communing uh with nature as much as possible. Uh I want to to have some a way a alone time uh, with nature because nature to me is uh, the best way to appreciate the how little you are in the bigger scheme of things and you can see how nature survives in itself even uh with the, to the best of time. So I use it as an inspiration that whatever happens to me everything is just temporary and whatever uh problems that I face I will emerge successful for as long as I remain uh stable I remain uh consistent with my goals. Super. And next one is that one thing you wish you knew earlier than life. One thing. I wish I knew earlier than life that it's okay to take uh risks. So I believe when I was younger I was so afraid to take risks because I've been I have, I'm an overthinker. 
uh, as a person uh, in the past. And uh, I always think about so many things before making uh, a decision. But there are times as, as when you think when you think more or when you overcomplicate things, the more you are not making enough progress in your career, in your life. So I believe that there are times where you have to be spontaneous. There are times where you have to just plunge, uh, yeah. take a plunge into the big uh, ocean and uh, try to see if you can swim. If not, you can always call for a lifesaver. Okay, yeah. And a social cause you would like to work towards in the future? Uh, definitely uh, something that's related to environmental causes. Uh, I always, uh, right now, actually one of my, one of the, goals that I have for this year is to participate more actively in environment in environmental uh, causes. It could be, uh, you know, cleaning as, as simple as uh, joining a community and cleaning the park or cleaning our national parks here in Singapore, or even uh, learning things such as uh, uh, aquatic planting or uh, mm-hmm. anything related to the environment and also kind of are promoting uh, plant-based uh, food, plant-based diet. So I'm into that. I'm trying to figure out you know, a plan to be able to execute those things. Super. And your last question is, which profession would you like to take up if given a chance to like start over? Is there an, any other one? Uh, to be honest, if there is something that I would like to be, if I am not a marketer or an advertiser, it's something that's related to academia or education. I would like to eventually, probably that will be my uh, retirement career, to be a professor, to be an educator uh, in the future, to be a mentor uh, in the future. And if everything, you know, if, if, if just a, if it's a childhood dream, if you're gonna ask me of a childhood dream, it's going to be uh, a singer. I want I am I wanted to be a singer in the past, uh, but I think the corporate world is the call for corporate world has been uh, very strong, and I I don't regret uh, being in the corporate world because the corporate world being the corporate world allowed me to to work in uh, different places around the world, meet different people across different cultures. So there's definitely no regret in uh, in where I am at the moment. Thank you so much. Mark and these were all the questions I had for you but it was lovely lovely chatting with you I hope you likewise likewise thank Harsha you, thank, you so thank you thank you in the tech trial so this is it for today guys and uh, I hope you really got to know things which you were looking for in terms of it and we are talking about the marketing strategies for 2022 and we'll be back with another notable person another notable personality at Notable Talks by anytechtrial.com don't forget to follow us subscribe us and connect with us on social media till then please be safe take care bye